Hey guys, on this episode of Fish Addictions TV, we're doing something cool and unique. We're daytime burbot fishing. Now, Tim Humphrey from Aspen Outfitters gave us a call. Actually, we've been planning this for months. Tim is one of the guys that probably understands the burbot more than anybody else that I know. He has been fishing these fish since 2005, guiding, and really understands the movement of the burbot. Now, what he told us is, daytime burbot guys let's go out and just fish daytime when you guys are heading out on the lake we're already back sitting in front of the fireplace and talking about the day we are out here it's about 9 30 in the morning and we're going to fish till about 4 4 30 this afternoon and see what happens daytime burbot starts now Addiction, the fact or condition of being addicted to a particular substance, thing, or activity. An addiction is not desirable. It is something that overtakes your life. What happens when an addiction cannot be stopped? An addiction is stronger than any one drug with only one cure. The cure is not rehab. It is not medication. It is not a counselor. The only cure for us is the water beneath our feet. The rod in our hands, the anticipation of that next big bite, and the camaraderie we all share. This is Fish Addictions TV. Fish Addictions TV is brought to you by Eskimo Ice Fishing Gear and the rest of our fine sponsors. You know, being eel pout is one of those fish that not a lot of guys target, including ourselves. We needed to take that chance of stopping at reeds and grab the necessities. Man, it's one of those places where you literally can, it's a one-stop shop. Uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's an amazing place and it has a lot of stuff. It just makes it that much easier for us to get everything that we need from the tackle, the gear, line, if you want to grab a, you know, a little snack or candy bar, a drink. They're able to accommodate all your needs and being able to just stop in there, grab a few things off the shelf, do a little shopping on top of it. It's great to have that resource so close to home. You know, I want to thank Trapper's Landing for providing us a place to stay on this trip. One thing that I think is really cool that Trapper provides that I've never seen at any other lodge is well, as soon as you walk in the door, somebody's there to greet you. And after that, you walk into this place where they have rods and reels and augers. And I'd never cross, come across anything like this before. They have a little pro shop. And my first uh, idea was, uh, they, they got stuff here to sell, you know, in case you forget something. But it turns out they have, it's almost set up like a library system. You can, if you're staying there and, and you want to do a little ice fishing, you can check out a flasher, you can check out an ion, you can check out some Markham cameras, even a Yeti cooler. Go out on the lake, use it, come back at the end of the day, and they charge you nothing. It's all part of being one of their guests because that's a super cool experience that Trappers offers that you are not gonna see anywhere else. Good, thanks guys, Thank you're you. welcome. Thank you. All right, have a good night guys. You too. Yeah. So we utilize the snowmobiles to get out here on this particular body of water to target these daytime eel pout. And it was a short jaunt, it wasn't too far of a distance for us to go. And uh, being able to have a guy like Tim out here and kind of show us the ropes for these daytime eel pout 
he really breaks it down to a science and he's uh, great at explaining you know, to novice daytime eel pelt guys like ourselves how we can get out, target these fish, and have success doing it. I was excited to, uh, to hear that Fish Addictions wanted to go out and actually catch some daytime burbot. I know they'd done an episode last year of some you know, dark burbot and uh, you know, the opportunity to actually take guys out and show them that this can be done. Uh, not accidentally one here or there, but to go out on the ice and catch several over the course of a day. Out. Beautiful. Beautiful. Who says you can't catch pout during the day? <laughs> you know guys, what we're on here is a really unique bite. We're out here with Tim Humphreys, the guides for these eel pout as a living. And when he said that we could get on eel pout during the day, personally I was like, is that gonna be something that we can go out and show these guys a good time? Well, the thing is, is we've been here not very long. And that's number two, and look at that thing. Just a hog. <laughs> Patrick. <laughs> Didn't take me three days this time. Stick with us for more Fish Addictions TV. At Glacier, our goal is to build only the highest quality ice fishing shelters, constructed of premium materials that will provide lasting value and years of trouble-free service. See for yourself how our attention to detail and never-ending commitment to product improvement sets a Glacier Ice House apart from the competition and makes a Glacier Ice House the ultimate way to play. For more information, visit GlacierIceHouse.com. Manitoba, Canada's heart beats. You know, fishing with Tim has actually been a really cool experience. To fish with a guy that has really dedicated time and effort to understanding a species, a single species of fish, is uh, really just fun to pick his brain and and it was just non-stop questions. I'm sure Tim felt like he was in a classroom all weekend with us, 
fishing, just asking question after question after question, and we were just soaking it in. So a lot of times when you catch a fish out of one hole, especially during the daytime, are you getting multiples out of that same hole? You can actually, uh, if, if you got your electronics down there, sometimes you'll see five, six fish follow that one up at, you know, um, just because they're spawning, so they're schooling up, they're really following any fish that's swimming around, so, yeah. So is this daytime bite something that is an all year thing or more of a mid peak spawning time thing? Pout! Pout on! <laughs> it's uh, it's about a one week phenomenon to be honest with you. Really? Yep. All right, so kind of give you a, how we started out here. You know, we drilled a, a grill pattern um, covering depths from upper 20s out to like 45 feet here. Um, you can't always just focus on one part of the structure. You gotta, you know, you might as well do your work ahead of time and drill your holes and then you can move around and hole hop and find where the fish are. Um, right now we're catching them out a little bit deeper, probably 38 to, to 45 here. And uh, they're gonna move around. We'll get some shallower in a little bit, but um, that's a good way to start your day out. Most of my pout fishing takes place after the sun goes down. So I feel a little bit out of my element. I've never done the daytime burbot thing. I, Tim and I are good friends and he always, around this time of year, sends me pictures of daytime burbots. And I have a hard time believing it, but I know it's true, but it was really, really cool to get out here and do it during the day instead of sleeping all day just to stay up all night. Oh, piggy. <laughs> Going for quality, not quantity, right there, Patrick. Yep. Probably the biggest one that I've caught in a long time. This is so cool during the day. Yep. I mean, you know that I'm, I'm a night owl. Right. I do this at night, but to have this opportunity to do it during the day, super cool. <sighs> Thank you, girl. <laughs> <laughs> Smaller one. Smaller, yep. Would that be a male, do you think? Small male? I was actually gonna mention earlier, um, some of the largest ones that we get are actually males. Oh. Herb. Jeff Penn. <laughs> Stick with us for more daytime burbot. Fish Addictions TV. Out here, speed is everything. The new Eskimo rocket runs fast, spins fast, cuts fast. Engineered from the ground up with an engine designed to run at optimal RPMs, giving you its fullest potential within its power band. The bulletproof all-metal transmission is geared to spin fast. The precision-based cutting head effortlessly cuts fast. Nobody sells more powered ice augers than Eskimo. Get assurance. Get reliability. Get Eskimo. No matter what you're chasing on the ice this winter, Acme Tackle has you covered. From the innovative Hyperglide and Hyper Rattle series to legendary Castmaster, Rattle Master, and Sidewinder Spoons, or the all-new professional gray tungsten series, Acme Tackle has what you need. Visit acmetackle.com to check out our full product assortment. Acme Tackle rattles louder, glides further, and glows brighter. Get hooked up with Acme Tackle. Reed's Family Outdoor Outfitters is the number one ice fishing headquarters. We have everything you need from today's firearms to the latest fishing electronics and the hottest footwear and outdoor apparel. We only carry the best brands at the best prices. Have a question? No problem. We have the most knowledgeable team in the business ready to answer your call personally seven days a week. Whether you're visiting us in Walker, Minnesota or touching your screen with our state-of-the-art distribution center, we can get you gear when you need it fast. Cast or blast, Reeds has the best service, best advice, and best price guaranteed.
of Bemidji, Minnesota. For me, eel pout isn't a fish species that I devote a lot of my time to in the winter. It seems to be kind of a short window to get out on a good bite for eel pout. So being able to get out here, capitalize on that bite window and put numerous fish topside and, and seeing those daytime eel pout is, is awesome. Contorted itself. There you go. There we go. Sweet. <laughs> that lake leopard. You know, compared to like the pout on Lake of the Woods, what makes them have this real bright yellow? Yeah, I don't know if it has to do with the water clarity. You know, a lot of our lakes here, Bemidji, Leech, Cavacona, they've all got good clear water, so they got bright colors. And they'll darken up as, uh, as they spawn out. They're gonna turn brown. Their bellies are already a lot more darker color than they typically would be through most of the winter time. And that's just from being on the bottom or what's? I, I think yeah. a lot, lot more activity you know, to where they're they're pushing around and foraging a lot more, so they're going, yeah. Yeah, they are a beautiful fish. Very underappreciated, but oh, sure fun to catch. Totally, yeah. <laughs> Great fight. Awesome, way to go, congrats. Thank you. The weather out here so far today has been great. The sun is shining. There's hardly any wind whatsoever, minimal cloud cover. We are expecting a front to come rolling in here though later today, so we might have some cloud cover and increased winds. We'll get out there, keep uh, getting after those eel pout, and we'll see what we can get. Oh, he just curled up sideways and yeah, stuck, stuck himself in the straight in the hole. <laughs> Has he got two hooks in him? <laughs> <laughs> no, just one. So you were talking when we first got here that most of what you're looking for is there's a structure base with a deep drop off basically. Yep. We're all the way from 50 up to 20. Sometimes yep. they can be up in 20 feet in during the day. They can be that, yeah, and it varies with the lake. You know, you can get some of the fish up, up in 17 feet of water, 14 feet of water. Um, I always start at 30 feet though and, you know, deeper, shallower, and if you catch some stuff deeper, just keep progressing out. You know, we just moved out to 50 right. feet here, and yeah, we kinda, now we're catching more fish again, so. But the, we gotta yeah. get at it. Eagle. <laughs> That's a good pout. So, you know, most guys are fishing them with big heavy spoons. You're using big heavy just lead jigs. Yep. What's the whole purpose behind that? Well, I mean, obviously here. there's a there's a rhyme and the, reason for right. this. A lot of trial and error. We'll set him down for a second. Um, what I like to do is when I'm when I'm fishing, I'm I'm fishing right on the bottom and I'm hitting the bottom steady and when I hit that bottom, whether it's a soft muddy bottom or a sandy bottom, right now we're on sand and gravel, it's gonna, the jig is gonna sit up, you know, on the bottom, you're gonna have your minnows are right in the strike zone. And uh, these pout are more apt to grab stuff down low. Right. You know, they're typically eating, you know, wounded perch, crayfish, things like that, crustaceans and stuff off the bottom. Not a bottom feeder necessarily, because they are an aggressive predator. But uh, yeah, you're keeping the minnows right where they want it, you know. Um, and it's important to say the way you're fishing this is like, you know, a guy like myself with we're fishing walleyes and stuff like that and now coming to this pout. I know last year we got out and did a pout episode with yep. some guys and it actually took me quite a while to kind of figure out how to fish them. Because it's not it's not the same. You're not just coming out no. here and pounding bottom and lifting them up and that kind of stuff. Your key is basically fishing right on the bottom, just enough to make a disturbance once in a while, maybe give it a little bit more and, yep. and right back down. Yeah, I, I pound that bottom, you know, heavy. Um, 
these jigs don't happen to have a rattle on them. Rattles are great, definitely. Um, any sound, vibration. But uh, then I'll, occasionally I'll do like a foot drop. Just if there's, you know, pout up the brake or whatever and you raise that up to where it can see it, you can get that visual Because these pout are, I mean, just right on the bottom, basically, just yeah, most of the time around, so that's why you're fishing you know, when right you have, there. When you have a camera down there and you're filming them, um, occasionally there'll be a foot or two off the bottom. Like I mentioned before, um, when they're spawning and chasing each other around, um, you, you're gonna bring one up, you're gonna have other fish follow. And uh, I'm not sure if this one's a... Can't, this one isn't spawning yet, so probably uh, a female yet, but... Beautiful fish. And that one's gonna be how big, you think? Oh, uh, that's pretty, pretty probably average. Five probably and a half. A little bit over. Yeah, um, on uh, most of my trips, we were about five pounds. Pretty um, there's some lakes where you get, you know, two and a half, three pound is kind of the average, and then you'll get a five or six pounder, but we get a lot of them this size, That's four or five pounds, five and a half pounds. Beautiful fish. So Awesome. Totally. Get back at it. Yep. I like things. <laughs> You're a medium heavy type guy. Medium heavy, yeah. So you can just control these fish. Cause yeah. Look at the power. Just you get something good. too light and you give it a good hook set, you can you can bust it pretty quick. Right. Yeah. You know, as we're out here fishing, just kind of having a conversation with each other, those fish, they just all of a sudden attack it. And most of the time you weren't seeing them on the graph and it just surprised you every time. Woohoo! <laughs> Chunk. <laughs> Chunky monkey. What a beautiful fish. What is it? 11 o'clock? Yeah, something if like that. that. <laughs> no, not even 10 yet. Is it 10 10 30? 30. 10 AM. Way to go. Nice fish. <laughs> Nice yellow on there. That's a nice fish. Gorgeous. Being able to come out and target eel pout, not just being in the daytime alone, but just getting out to target a species that is super underappreciated and underutilized. There's so many different resources and lakes in the area here that have eel pout, and it is a fish species that is a lot of fun to get after. Uh, it's different, it's unique, it's something that uh, does have that special time frame of the year where you can get out and have a lot of success. It's so much fun. One of the rules is just yelling POW when you get one on so everybody knows what's going on because these things are powerful. POW! POW! Why do I feel like a little kid? <laughs> You know, Tim, I want to thank you for getting us on the super unique bite. It's an experience that I didn't even know what to expect coming out here. No, I'm glad, you, glad, glad <laughs> that you guys could do it, so. You know, it's pretty cool to sit here and actually have a conversation with you because you, you probably understand these fish more than most, if not everybody, because you've put a lot of time and effort a lot into of time, understanding these fish. A lot of hours on the ice, yeah. Yep, definitely. You know, guys, Tim guides bear and bourbon. That's what you guide for, right? Pretty much exclusively, yeah. Yep. So if you want to get in on some daytime bourbon action, give Tim a call. Aspen Guide Service. Aspen, Aspen Outfitters. Aspen Outfitters, yep. Bears and, and uh, bourbons. Bears and bourbons, yeah. <laughs> loving it. So nice. <laughs> thank you very much. Yeah, no, thank you guys for coming. Guys, we don't know where we're going to be from week to week. The season is starting on the backside on the end of the season. We're still going strong. Where we'll be next week, we don't know. But we're going to chase something exciting and just have a ton of fun doing it. Guys, I'm going to get back down there and try to get another one before the day is over. Fish Addictions TV. 
So having the opportunity to stay at Trapper's Landing, it's, it's the perfect ending to a great day on the ice. We're able to get back, get the gear off, warm up, get together as a group and cook out, have a good meal. And just, it really ties that whole day together. It's a great ending, great way to cap it off. And their accommodations and staff are just terrific. <laughs> See this? Some of what we don't show you guys is all these big expensive snowmobiles are really there to take naps. Now we call this the bear cat nap. It happens on every episode. <laughs> when you're not out burbot fishing and Tim's not making Yo Pau tacos, it's cheese witch time. Cheers. Um, yeah, the, the stuff, I think. Uh, so uh, I do have one thing though. Um, <coughs> Pout!